Welcome, let's talk about the basics of gas phase boundary conditions in FDS and how to set up a simple gas burner. In the end it should look like the setup that is shown on the right hand side. From the description in the experiment report we can see that the top face of the burner was located 75 cm above the floor of the laboratory. Since in this case I have chosen a fluid cell size of 6 cm, I have adjusted the burner height to be 72 cm. What we want to focus on now is this box below the flame. This one I will call the burner support. This raspberry colored area on top of this box will become the inlet for the combustible gas, so effectively the gas burner. In FDS this box is considered an obstruction to the flow field. These obstructions are described in the section 7.2 in the user guide. Their dimensions are defined the same way as we did it already before with the mesh. We will set up a bounding box by defining two points in opposite corners. Back in the FDS input file I have now added some section headers. With these section headers we can keep our file better organized. In this section that I have called geometry I will now add in the description of the gas burner. Just note these section headers have no meaning to FDS. They are simply here for the user to better organize the input. From the experiment description we see that the gas burner is a square with a 30 cm edge length. I want to set up the burner support that it has a square cross section with 30 cm edge length. I also want to have this gas burner centered around the origin. Therefore in the x-axis the box starts at negative 15 cm and ends at positive 15 cm. The same is true for the y-axis. In the z-axis I start at 0 cm because I wanted to have the origin focused on the center of the top face of the burner. It then extends to negative 72 cm to reach the bottom of the domain. Now let's see how this box looks like. If we start FDS again we see that it is now running through all the time steps. If we wanted to see only the changes to the geometry we would not need to do that. We can prevent this by setting the simulation time to zero. Then it will only execute a setup run. We see here when we run FDS again the output changes and it tells us that it did run only the setup process. If we are now looking into the smoke view file we see this new box at the bottom of the domain. To set up our gas burner we need to introduce some combustible gas into the domain. This will be achieved here by setting up some boundary condition. These boundary conditions are called surfaces in FDS and are covered in the surf name list group. These surfaces are then attached to the geometry. This can be accomplished in a couple different ways which I will cover now. First of all let's define some dummy surfaces that have different colors so that we can see how they are applied. Let's start out with giving the boundary conditions an ID. This ID is used so that we can link this boundary condition to some of the obstructions. In the definition of an obstruction we can use the parameter surf underscore ID to link a boundary condition to this obstruction. As value to this parameter we provide the same ID that we have used to define the surface. I've added some color to the surface so that we can better see in smoke view where this boundary condition was applied. Just save the input file and run the setup again. With the red color we can see that the box is now completely covered in the boundary condition C1. There's a few different ways how we can define the colors. Some colors have names. In the user guide in table 7.1 you can see the predefined colors. There is the names provided that you can use with the parameter color and the RGB values. For example we could set up another boundary condition. In this case I have chosen the color blue. Instead of using the parameter color we could also use the RGB parameter and then just provide the three numbers. For blue it would then be 0, 0, 255. For now we have the complete burner support covered in a single boundary condition. To set up the gas burner what I would like to have is that the boundary condition is applied only to the top face of this box. Next to using the surf underscore id parameter with an abstraction we can also use two others. As the next parameter there would be surf underscore ids. With it we can call three different surface ids, therefore three different boundary conditions. In this case the first entry will cover only the top face of the box, the second entry will cover the four sides and the third entry will cover the bottom. If we run this setup again we can see now that the top is red, the four sides are blue and the bottom is this light pinkish color. With the surf underscore id6 parameter we can provide six different ids. This will then apply a different boundary condition to each face of the box. If we just rerun it and look into smoke view we see that each side has its own color. So again the surf underscore id covers the full obstruction. Surf underscore ids covers the top, the sides and the bottom with a different boundary condition each. Surf underscore id6 covers each individual face of the obstruction. Sometimes it's very helpful if you can set up a boundary condition that is automatically applied to all obstructions inside your domain. There is a parameter for the surf name list group that is called default. This is a boolean parameter. It can either be set to true or false. Be mindful if you write the words true or false in all capital letters you have to start with a period and end with a period. You can also use only a capital T for true and a capital F for false. Note in the obstruction definition I have removed the link to the boundary condition C1. If we have a look in smoke view we can now see that everything is covered with the same boundary condition. We can overwrite the default for each individual obstruction. For example I've added here a link to a different boundary condition. With this everything should be covered red except for our obstruction this should be covered blue. Looking back into smoke view this is exactly what happened. There's a couple of predefined or special boundary conditions in FDS. Two important ones are inert and open. Others would be for example periodic, mirror or HVAC. 
Special boundary conditions are covered in the section 742, Special Events. These predefined boundary conditions can directly be used in the input files. And in fact, we have already seen the boundary condition inert. I'm now using the inert boundary condition for the burner support. You can also see from this yellowish color, this is the default boundary condition of FDS. If we define obstruction without adding a boundary condition, FDS will automatically apply the inert boundary condition. This is also highlighted here in the user guide. In section 7.1, for specifying the boundary condition, it tells us specifically that the default boundary condition is inert. To set up a simple gas burner, we now need to find a way to introduce a combustible gas into the domain. FDS provides for this some convenience functionality, which can be directly added to the surface definition. So let's define a new surface that we can use to create the gas burner. I start the surface definition with providing an ID. In this case I chose burner. This helps us to easily keep track of the things that we are setting up. I've chosen the color raspberry so that I can clearly identify in smoke view where the combustible gas is to be released. Finally the convenience parameter is added. This parameter is called HRRPUA, the heat release rate per unit area. For this particular example what we wanted to reproduce is the gas burner with 57.5 kW from the McCaffrey experiments. So right now I have naively written in here the 57.5 kW. Please note that this is not the correct value that we need to use, I just want to put something in here that we can get going. I want to use this to explain in a later step how we can make sure that we have actually set up the correct values for the heat release rate. Let's now figure out if it works. For this I set up the simulation to run for 20 seconds. It doesn't really matter which value you put in here, I just want to set it up that the simulation is processing through a couple of time steps and that we can see something changes in smoke view. So save and run it again. However it presents us with an error message. Specifically it is telling us that a React line needs to be defined if you want to use the HRR PUA convenience function. A React line is used to define chemical reactions for the gas phase combustion. If you want to have a gas phase combustion reaction in FDS, you always have to define your chemical reaction. I've introduced a new section for this, because these reaction definitions can become relatively detailed. In our case here, we will make use of further convenience functions. For example, FDS contains a couple of predefined chemical species. Predefined species in FDS are listed in the user guide in Appendix A. They contain information like the chemical formula or the heat of formation. In our case, the experiments have been performed with natural gas, and I am choosing here methane as a proxy. With the parameter fuel in the react line we can directly call these predefined species. So I can just type in here methane in all capital letters and FDS knows what to do. We also need to make sure that the boundary condition is applied properly. Again we wanted to have it positioned at the top of the burner support. For this I am simply using the surf IDs parameter in the obstruction. Here I am using the surface burner for the top face and set the rest to inert. We can also set up an ID for our obstruction to make sure it is identified as the burner support. We can now save and rerun the simulation. We should then see that FDS is progressing through the time steps. While it is still running, we can already open the smoke view file. We see now that the burner surface was applied. We can now load the heat release rate data associated to the flame. Simply right click somewhere in the smoke view window. Just hover the mouse cursor over the first item load unload and then move to 3D smoke. If you then move the mouse cursor to HRR PUV and click it will load the flame data. And we can see now ever so slightly that there is a flame. On your keyboard you can hit Alt and 3 to have the flame rendered more opaque. When you hit T on your keyboard you can start and stop the animation. We see here that the timeline stops in my case at 14 seconds. Because when I opened the smoke view file that was how far FDS had progressed through the simulation. We see now on the left hand side that the simulation has finished at 20 seconds. If you right click again and go to the load unload menu there is an option to reload the data. In it we can just choose now to reload the data. And we see that the time now stops at 20 seconds. Right now what you don't see is smoke. The smoke is different data from the flame and needs to be loaded separately. So we go to the load unload menu again and then 3D smoke. What you would then need to load is the soot density. If we click on that we still don't see any smoke. The reason is that the chemical reaction that we have set up is running a complete combustion. Therefore there is no soot. There is an extra parameter that we can provide to the react line which is called soot yield. Here you can add in the gram per gram values that you also find in literature. In this case I've chosen a soot yield of 0.022. This is simply to have some soot production that we can see some smoke. If you open smoke view again we can now load the HRR POV for the flame as well as the soot density for the smoke. And we see now that there's a smoke plume rising above the gas burner. It is trapped under the ceiling of the domain and starts to form a smoke layer. We will cover further details on gas phase reactions in a later video. You can also check out this video here. Right now the issue that we are having is that the smoke is trapped inside this room. If you go back to the beginning of the video, in the setup that I presented there you can see that the smoke is leaving the domain. This is what we will set up now. To open up the domain I will now make use of one of the predefined boundary conditions. Specifically I am using the open boundary condition that I have briefly mentioned earlier. What we also need to do now is to define where this boundary condition is to be located inside our domain, specifically at the domain walls. 
For this I'm introducing now the vent name list. It is further described in the user guide in chapter 7.4, Applying Surface Properties. Remember before, when we had defined our obstruction, we could assign different boundary conditions to the individual faces of the obstruction. With vents, we can cover subsets of the surface cells of an obstruction or the domain boundaries. For example, I set up the vent with the surface ID open as mentioned before. With the XB parameters, we can define the dimensions of the vent. The vent will be a 2D plane, therefore we need to set the length of one of the edges to zero. In this case, I want to use the open boundary condition for a subsection of the back wall of our domain. Therefore, I set y1 and y2 to the same value, in our case 75 cm. Then the plane has an extent only in x and in z. So I've chosen an opening of 1 square meter, 1 meter in x axis and 1 meter in the z axis. If you now have a look in smoke view again, we can see this white square at the back wall. But what I would like to have is the boundary condition applied to the whole wall. A straightforward way is that I copy the dimensions of the back wall from the domain into the definition of the vent. Again, FDS provides us here with more convenience functionalities. We can now change from XB to MB, which is the mesh boundary. There we can provide a string, for example Xmin. The plane in Xmin will then be located at the lowest X value. You will also find this in the user guide in the section for the vents. So we have for each axis a minimum and maximum, for example Xmin and Xmax. Basically I am now setting up five definitions for the minimum and maximum of the X axis, minimum and maximum of the Y axis and the maximum of the Z axis. The minimum of the Z axis I leave out so that I still have a floor inside the domain. If we run the simulation now, we see that all the sides and the ceiling are open and also that the smoke is leaving the domain at the top. In the next step, we will discuss the basics for recording data from FDS simulations. Thank you very much and have a nice day!